Hey there, first of all I want to thank everyone who mirrored my video that got flagged and temporarily removed from YouTube. As you may have noticed, the video is now reinstated. Also, the strike on my account is gone, so thank you so much. As for the flaggers, what did you accomplish? You basically got my video to be uploaded on more than 300 channels, generating a total of views higher than I could have hoped for, and demonstrating once again that by trying to censor a video, you will only make it go viral. Also, I want to stress the irony of me making a video in which, among other things, I talk about Muslim extremists trying to censor freedom of speech, only to get a counter-argument, then trying to get my video banned. <laughs> Thanks for validating my point, flaggers. On that video, I got a few comments accusing me of overgeneralizing, that I am judging all Muslims based on what some Muslims do. Messages like this. I swear, it's retards like you who cause such problems. Why do you fucking judge a whole book and religion upon the follower's choices? Who says these are Muslims in the first place? There are a bunch of retards who follow a book. Don't judge a book by its followers, you fucker. Go read the book yourself and judge it upon what it says. What an ignorant retard. Hello again, oh my god, this douchebag. If one policeman does something bad, are all policemen evil? If one teacher does something bad, are all teachers evil? If one nurse does something bad, are all nurses evil? If one Muslim does something bad, is Islam itself evil? Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, etc. Well, you see, I don't deny that there are many, many peaceful Muslims in the world. I personally know Muslims who are very good people and anything but violent. But just like you see in your messages, you cannot judge a religion or a book based on what some of its followers are doing. So, let's take a look at what it is written in your holy book. Starting with your very own prophet of God, Muhammad, the merciful and compassionate. For instance, after Muhammad conquered the large Jewish settlement, he asked Kinana, one of the Jewish leaders, where the treasure of its tribe is. When Kinana refused to tell him, Muhammad gave orders for him to be tortured. And I quote, Torture him until you extract what he has. So he kindled a fire with flint and steel on his chest until he was nearly dead. After that, Muhammad had him beheaded. If the Prophet of God gave orders for someone to be tortured in order to obtain information, can you deny that Muhammad's followers may justify using the same methods by saying they are only following the Prophet's example? By the way, after Muhammad had Kinana killed, he married his wife and consummated the marriage in that very same day in his tent. So he tortures and kills this woman's husband. He kills her father and the people from her tribe. Then later on, the same day, he takes her in his tent to marry her. Pardon me for saying so, but in English this very much spells rape. Let's look at another fragment about what Muhammad did to a tribe named Banu Quraiza that sided with the Meccans in a battle. And I quote, Then Muhammad went out to the market of Medina and dug trenches in it. Then he sent for them and struck off their heads in those trenches as they were brought to him in batches. There were 600 or 700 in all though some put the figure as high as eight or nine hundred. As they were being taken out in batches to Muhammad, they asked Kaab what he thought would be done to them. He replied, Don't you see that the summoner never stops, and those who are taken away do not return? By Allah, it is death. This went on until Muhammad made an end of them. Later on we learned from one of the captives. I was among the captives of Banu Quraiza. They, Muhammad followers, examined us, and those who had begun to grow pubic hair were killed, and those who had not were not killed. I was among those who had not grown hair. All the men and the boys who reached puberty were killed. As you may know, boys start growing pubic hair at about 10 to 14 years old, so boys as young as that were beheaded on the orders of the merciful prophet. The remaining children and women were taken as slaves by Muhammad's people. And the worst part of it is that only a few members of this tribe actually sided with the Meccans. The rest of them, the majority, didn't. It says so in the Hadith, but the fact that they were innocent counted for nothing. Now, where am I going with this? I'm not saying that Muhammad was an all-bad man, because I know he did some good things as well. But when you say don't judge a book by what its followers are doing, I have to say, well, the book does justify their deeds. The problem is Muhammad is not seen as simply a man of his time. Instead, he is held as the highest example of how a Muslim man should act today. So yes, the Muslim extremists do justify acts such as mass killing of the enemy, or torture, or pedophilia if you consider that Muhammad had a six-year-old wife. Is it or is it not written in your book, whoever leaves Islam, kill him? Didn't your prophet say, fight and kill the disbelievers, wherever you find them? 
I keep getting messages from Muslims insisting that true Islam is a peaceful religion. But at the same time, I also get messages like this. This message is a warning to you. You are an atheist. It's your decision to believe or don't believe on God, Allah. It's your decision to be blind, deaf and dumb. But you have no right to insult my religion, Islam, or my great honorable prophet Muhammad. Anyone who dares to insult our prophet Muhammad have to be killed. This is what God, Allah, says. And you have a problem with that, then just stop insulting Islam. You have the first and final warning. If I have to travel to Romania from Pakistan to slit your throat and kill you, then I will. Believe me, I will kill you. I'm not gonna read it all, but so it goes on and on and on. And they also think that this is the true Islam. And that they are the ones following what the Quran teaches. One final point I wanna make. Some people were upset that in my video I implied that Islam doesn't deserve respect. I don't see why any religion would. And I don't understand why criticizing someone's religion is seen so offensive and held right up there with race or gender, sexual orientation or nationality, when none of those things are choices while religion is. I did not choose to be born in Romania, to be white, to be attracted to the opposite sex or to be a female. Those are not one's choices to make. But religion is very much a personal choice, at least in the Western culture. And as your personal choice, it should be open to criticism, just like your choice in music is. If you know one legitimate reason for why religion should be above criticism or should deserve more respect than any other choice you make, please let me know what that reason is, because I cannot find it anywhere. Peace. But not as defined by Islam.